Hi, I'm Claire Varley and welcome back to the home of EDFL Web TV, the Pasco Vale Hotel. This season, we'll be coming to you weekly right here on the EDFL YouTube channel, so make sure to subscribe to keep updated with all our videos. It's been another action-packed week of EDFL footy, so let's jump straight into the discussion. Thanks, Claire. Yes, we're at the Pasco Vale Hotel, home of EDFL Web TV this week, and looking forward to round 11. The broadcast van is heading out to JP Faulkner for Oak Park versus West Meadows. It's a mini elimination final, and we'll get to all the games in Essendon Ford Division 1 in just a moment. My name's Teo Pelizzeri, joined by Adam Russell and Adam Saracoglu, and we're going to start with Strathmore Community Bank Premier Division. And guys, we've got a very interesting game to start. We were at the uh, return fixture earlier in the season when Greenvale absolutely spanked Avondale Heights but Avondale beating Pasco Vale last me week means that now we might have to take them a little bit more seriously heading into this one uh, at Canning Reserve. Can they win? Can they make it two in a row against teams in the top three? It's definitely game on that's for sure down at Canning on the weekend. Uh, an improvement as well on the result from section road earlier in the season. Very disappointed didn't really turn up uh, mentally that day to Avondale Heights and uh, I'm expecting a much better show. Obviously, there has been an improvement having beaten just, uh, just beaten Pasco Vale and uh, pretty good side in. Obviously, both sides, uh, Pasco Vale and Avondale Heights on the weekend. So even if Greenvale does bring their best to the table, uh, I'm pretty sure this one will be pretty close, but uh, just haven't been convincing enough. Avondale Heights I haven't got enough credits in the book for me to tip them just now. So I expect Greenvale to bounce back. Adam Russell, uh, do you see the Heights being able to win this game, or do you think Greenvale will reinforce their standing as the uh, the clear third best team in the league? I think they'll definitely take a, a lot of confidence out of that win over Pasco Vale last week. And uh, with Greenvale, if if Tommy Hill doesn't get up after that knee injury, I think. Avondale might fancy themselves a chance, but I still think Greenvale will get up in a in a pretty tight contest. Pasco Vale have got to bounce back. Uh, they are away at Airport West. Adam Sarakoglu, Airport West, uh, un underwhelming against Keelor, safe to say, uh, not able to, to get within 10 goals in the end. So do you see them as a similar sort of margin underdog in this one, or can they at least give pa uh, Pasco Vale a bit of a fright as the Panthers try to get back on the winner's list? Uh, sorry, this one's going to be a pretty easy win for Pasco Vale. Um, they might just want to beat up on a on a side that's struggling a little bit after a loss uh, you know, and one they probably were expecting to win against Avondale Heights. I think Paco might just want to take it out on Airport West, unfortunately. I, I don't say that with a smile. And uh, Adam Russell, West Coburg welcomes Strathmore out to Coburg City Oval. Uh, we, we talked this one up last time and it wasn't close, but West Coburg, uh, they've kicked 150 points against the Northern Saints. They've had a, a healthy win. Strathmore themselves, though, uh, going through a revival at the moment, trying to keep in the top four mix. Which way do you see this one going? And, of course, uh, Coburg City Oval, Strathmore will be hoping to play either an elimination or maybe a prelim final out there later in the season. Yeah, I think uh, West Coburg, they're definitely a, a well-run side under Digme Morel, uh, Morel out there, but I, I like the way Strathmore are going about their footy. They were, they were competitive against Aberfeldy, and the win over Marby Park was a very good one, so I think they'll, they'll get the job done again this week. Adam, Maribyrnong Park are taking on Keylor. This is one of those crucial eight-point battles to get into the top four. It's a tough one to pick. I'm going to give Keylor you know, the respect here and say that in, in the last couple of weeks, they've found avenues to goal. They've kicked some healthy scores. I think it was their third highest score of the weekend against Airport West uh, this last weekend. I think they'll beat Maribyrnong Park and they'll uh, put a little bit of a down payment on fourth spot. What do you reckon? Uh, yeah, Marby got the chocolates first time around, Tao, and I think they'll get the chocolates the second time around. Uh, you know, Keelor, they're showing signs of improving without uh, completely dominating against the lower teams in the competition. They're at least winning and showing a lot of good signs. But... Uh, yeah, I really like Maribyrnong Park. They're, they're a gutsy young side um, in comparison to Keelor anyway. And the fact that they got them the first time, uh, is this going back at Monk Oval, Taylor, or? Uh This is at uh, Monk Oval. It is at Monk Oval. Maribyrnong Park, I, I think, uh, should win. I don't know if it's an upset or not. I reckon this is a coin flip. Unlucky perhaps not to be at a broadcast game on the weekend. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go with Marby. Now, Aberfeldy off the back of that powerhouse performance are playing the Northern Saints at Clifton Park. Of course, last year we got probably the, the biggest EDFL shock result uh, in the last 10 years. <laughs> Maybe one of the biggest shock results of all time when Northern Saints came out and rolled Aberfeldy on their home deck. This time around, I think it'd be uh, 10 times the surprise if Northern Saints were to find a way to get the four points. But uh, will Aberfeldy ease off a bit or will that ruthless, merciless streak continue? Could this be similar to the Greenvale result for Northern Saints and they're looking at 200, maybe a 300-point loss? What, what did uh, Ab Aberfeldy beat Greenvale by, Taylor? Was it 40 points. 40 points times that by four. 
Okay, uh, so 160. Adam Russell, what do you reckon? I, I've got to agree with the Chief. I think uh, Aberfeldy, they'll, they'll remember that loss last year and they, they won't want a, a repeat and I think they'll come out hard and they'll uh, really do a job on the Northern Saints. All right, let's go to Essendon Ford Division 1, the broadcast game. I, I flagged it as a mini final. It has more at stake for West Meadows than Oak Park at this stage of the season, you would think, because Westy need to beat teams above them. They, they, need the, they drew with Duda Stars, but they've been well beaten by Craigieburn. They lost to Tullamarine. They lost to Oak Park first time around. They need a scalp, and this would be the perfect time to step up and get one uh, and beat Oak Park on their home deck at J.P. Faulkner. Adam Sarakoglu, there's a lot of unknowns heading into this one about both teams, and we're going to learn a bit about both sides, I get the feeling. Yeah, really looking forward to this game, Tail. Uh, two clubs I really like seeing live. Uh, I've been desperate to see Oak Park live this year because... They're so good one week, so disappointing the next. Uh, love to see him live just to get a real good picture of just uh, why potentially that is. Um, this is going to be a really good game, Tao. I, I don't know how to call it. As far as as far as far uh, the point you make about West Meadows and needing to beat teams above them, well, if they if they were to go down this weekend, Tao, uh, if the door wasn't already shut on them winning the flag this year, it's definitely shut and perhaps finals as well. Um, on paper, they should be beating Oak Park. They should have beaten them the first time around, as I'm sure you'll agree, Adam Russell, because you were there. Um, so for that reason, I think they will bounce back. And Oak Park's, you know, both teams have been up and down, but Oak Park's been a bit more down. So I, I feel more confident about tipping the Tigers. Adam Russell, you were at the corresponding fixture, uh, sorry, the, the reverse fixture earlier in the season. Discipline was a huge factor. Oak Park were good enough to get the win, and that was still when they were breaking out and we were starting to you know, realise, hang on, Oak Park's a, a contender for the finals this year. Um, how much has changed since then, and, and how much do you think some of the similar characteristics of the first head-to-head -head will still hold true this second time around? Well, uh, I think Oak Park have dropped off a little bit since that uh, that first fixture up against West Meadows, and I think West Meadows have had a, a, a long, hard look at themselves, and they've, they've really nailed down, and I think they're a fair chance to win this game, but I'm, I'm going to tip Oak Park, I think. All right, uh, let's move on to Craigieburn hosting Tullamarine. This one's up at DS Aitken, and uh, we've seen Tullamarine can go with a very defensive game plan, play for containment and protection to, to try and hold uh, against the top two. Maybe they're biding their time for September and then they'll unleash a surprise, but off the, the back of their recent results, Craigieburn, um, you know, they, they didn't absolutely blow Glenroy away last weekend. They conceded 90 points to them as well. Is Tullamarine a sneaky chance to inflict Craigieburn's first loss of the season? Definitely, but they don't have the personnel, Tao. And Craigie Byrne do. That's that's pure and simply the matter. I'm not just talking about the cloaks. Oh, I love what Nick Fletcher brings to the table. A really good young midfield and a tough one as well down at Craigie Byrne. Uh, I know Taylor have got a lot of those sort of types as well, but um, I just don't think they can match them 22 for 22. So... Craigie Byrne continue on their merry way, but uh, don't take Tala Marine lightly, that's for sure. Adam Russell, we're going to have you as our Around the Grounds correspondent at East Keelor versus Hillside. I, I caught about a quarter and a half of this when they played the Twilight game earlier in the season. It was a huge win for East Keelor at the time. It, it kept, it's kept them away from the bottom of the ladder ever since. Uh, but if they lose this one, Hillside overtakes them and East Keelor goes back to the bottom of the table. So it's a huge game, massive consequences, and we could see relegation decided um, even at this early stage of the season, depending on, on who wins this one. If, if Hillside was to lose, then they might have too much to do to get back into the division from here. Which way do you see it going, though? Uh, I'm, I'm really thinking that uh, you might end up seeing just as good a game as us uh, around the grounds this weekend. Yeah, I'm looking forward to a really excellent contest where I think both teams will be desperate for the win, I think. Could be do or die for Hillside here. It'll be interesting to see how they come out of that draw against Oak Park, but uh, I fancy East Keelor's chances. And Adam Sarakoglu, Taylor's Lakes taking on Glen Roy. The winner here may well consider themselves safe from relegation, but the loser will still be only on two wins and, and could potentially be below Hillside at the end of the day if Hillside was to beat East Keelor. So some, some real consequences uh, at stake in this one as well. One more chance, Taylor's Lakes. One more chance. I'm tipping you, but you go down, I'm off you for good. Wow. All right, Adam, Adam uh, Russell, give us a tip. Taylor's Lakes versus Glenroy. This one seems like a bit of a classic coin flip. Uh, I'm leaning towards Glenroy, actually. I Ooh. think they'll get the points. Uh, with the breaking the stalemate, I think I'm going to go with uh, Glenroy here. 
And let's move on to Strathmore Community Bank Division 2. It's another tough weekend coming up this round. And uh, we start with Burnside Heights taking on East Sunbury. These are always the fixtures that these two look forward to, but Burnside Heights form means that East Sunbury starts a pretty warm favourite. Adam Sarakoglu, can East Sunbury make it two from two against Burnside Heights this year? I think so. They've been a lot more competitive and uh, the, the, fall, the fall off from Burnside Heights has been... Uh, it's been as dramatic as ever, as ever I've seen basically you know, since I've been covering the league so I think East Sunbury will get the win this weekend. Adam Russell, Coburg Districts uh, hosting Hadfield. Uh, they'll be hoping to put up a decent challenge but gee Hadfield is such a juggernaut at the moment it's hard to see Coburg Districts getting the win. Um, which way do you see this one going? Yeah I think uh, Hadfield are almost the, uh, the Aberfeldy of Division 2 and I think they'll get the win here. Adam Sarakoglu, a margin maybe? Uh, can Coburg Districts keep it close? Can they try to scare Hadfield or do you feel as though the Hawks have got too much firepower? Yeah, definitely too much firepower. Uh, Patane, Patani, we disagree on that one, Adam Russell, but uh, he might just get another bag this weekend. Uh, yeah, a bit more quality around the park. Uh, and that Aberfeldy comment might be, you might be on something there, Adam Russell. Uh, they've got, yeah, it's a great talent pool they've got down at Hadfield and uh, that certainly shows its senior level. So uh, I think they'll get the win, but oh, I'll be conservative, you know. They might be happy to walk away five or six goals. Maybe seven. Mooney Valley against Keelor Park. Mooney Valley had a good win in the Twilight game played out at Keelor Park first time around. Now it's back at Ormond Park and a regular Saturday afternoon fixture. Uh, I think the Valley will win uh, handily. I think this could be somewhere between 30 to 50 points. I think they'll win at arm's length. Adam Sarakoglu, what do you think is going to happen? Yeah, Valley um, will bounce back after a pretty disappointing day up at uh, Roxy on the weekend. And Jakarta taking on Roxburgh Park. Of course, Jakarta got the win, these two head-to-head -head last time. Big comeback for them to do so. Since then, Roxburgh Park have impressed us in the broadcast game, but then put in a, a bit of a shocker and got out of jail against Mooney Valley, uh, yeah, Mooney Valley last week. So could Jakarta be a banana skin for Roxburgh Park, or do they continue their march towards what we suspect will be a second-place finish on the ladder? Banana skin. Be very, very careful. Be very uh, wary. Was this the upset of the year, perhaps, earlier in the season, Tao? Oh, no, I think we were pretty confident that Jakarta were maybe in the fifth best team, if not a top yeah. four team prior to the season. But yeah, I don't think we saw it coming the week that uh, Roxburgh Park lost to them because, of course, um, they were they were on a pretty good run of form at the time. Seems to be something in these games, the battle of Pascoval Road. Um, and I don't think Roxy's going to let that happen again. Magpies win. Adam Russell, uh, give us your thoughts. Uh, Jakarta or Roxburgh? Park, who's going to get the points this weekend? Yeah, I've had a lot of faith in uh, Roxy the last few weeks. They've knocked off a couple of really good sides and I think they'll knock off uh, Jakarta again this weekend. Well, it's going to be a cracking week of EDFL football. Make sure you join us for EDFL Radio from 1pm on Northwest FM 98.9 and also in your pocket streaming via the EDFL team app. Uh, make sure you join us for uh, the post-game show as well, all the way through to 5.30pm. We get the coaches in the box and also the sports moves best on ground. It really is the best way to stay in touch with everything going on around the EDFL. On behalf of Adam Sarakoglu and Adam Russell, my name's Teo Pelizzeri. Stay with us right here at the Pasco Vale Hotel. You're watching EDFL Web TV. That's it for this edition of EDFL Web TV. Make sure to subscribe to this channel for more updates. I'm Claire Barley and we'll see you back here at the Pasco Vale Hotel soon.